Here is a simple model of an electric circuit. The yellow rope represents the electrons in the circuit. We can't see the wire itself, but these metal posts represent the wire. They are what holds the electrons in their place. I can use my hand to exert a force on the electrons and cause them to move. Now we call the electrons an electric current. The role of my hand is that of a source. Before the hand or the source starts doing its job, where are the electrons found in the circuit? They are found everywhere. When my hand, the source, begins to push on the electrons and cause them to move, which electrons move first? they all start moving almost simultaneously. This is how electrons in a real circuit behave. Add in another hand. This one is going to hold on to the rope. For the hand that is serving as the source, it now feels harder to cause the electrons to move through the circuit. The second hand is playing the role of a load. If we do this for a while and fast enough, this hand starts to notice that it is becoming hot. As the rope moves through the hand, there's a transfer of energy. Where is that energy coming from? The energy comes from the system of electrons but ultimately it comes from the source. The source adds energy to the system and the load removes energy from that system. If we change how hard the hand is holding onto the rope, the movement of the rope is much slower and that corresponds to less current. So the electrons are experiencing a greater resistance to their movement. If the hand holds on only very gently, the rope moves quite easily and the speed of the electrons, which is the same as the electron current, increases. This is how electrons in real circuits behave. There are limitations to this model. For example, it only works for one simple loop of a circuit. In reality, many circuits are more complicated than this, but it gives us a very good idea for how the electrons behave in a simple circuit and how energy enters and leaves the system of electrons.